Dad, uh, can you help me with physics? I need to know what Newton's third law is. Uh, physics, that's science, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Newton's third law. Is Newton anything to do with John Newton, who wrote Amazing Grace, the hymn? No. Because it could be, because it maybe the law is to do with uh, slavery and the abolition of slavery. And no. No, a bit of chat. <coughs> um, I, I think your mum will know. Yeah. Do you want to try her? Yeah. Dad, could you help me with a maths question? Maths. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, be all right. Six x squared plus two y cubes minus two x squared plus y cubes plus four x squared plus y to the power of four. Yeah. What is x? What? 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 This is maths. Yeah. There's all these letters involved. What do you mean maths? Is it like is it like countdown where you have an anagram and you have to put all the different letters together and then create a different word? Because you're not going to get many words with X's and Y's like that. No. Yes, thank you very much for helping me. Are you sure? What well, look, ask your mum. Give it give mum a go. Give mum a go. She'll know we are. Dad, can you help me out with my history prep, please? History, history, yeah. History, Actually, yeah. history, yeah, right. History, history yeah, yeah. Go for it. Question C. Like yeah. the most important aspect of the Slytherin plan was that France would be defeated quickly. How far do you agree with the statement? Explain your answer. The, sh the Schlieffen plan. Yes. Is that something to do with Henry the Eighth and six wives? Because I know that it's it's, it's divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. Yeah. It's World War One. It's, it's World War One. Yeah. It's, it's not cheap. filled with the cloth of gold. No, no. no. Um, English Civil War. Have you got any? Have you got any questions around the Reformation? Because I'm quite good at that. Uh, not in this subject. No, no. no. M your mum. Your mum will know. Yeah, the okay. Surgeon. Give her a okay. go, and, and we'll see how. It goes. <laughs> Sorry. Dad, we've got a special delivery from Ofsted. It says, Dear Reverend Bromley, you've been placed in special measures. Your homeschooling requires improvement. This is a notice to improve. A warm welcome to you. It's lovely to have you back with us for our video service for September. And the theme of our video service is Education Sunday. Education Sunday is extremely important in the life of the church. It gives us the opportunity to celebrate all the amazing work that goes on in our schools. And also it gives us a, just a chance to celebrate the work of the church within our schools, uh, linking up with children and families in the ways that we do. Uh, our service is going to have lots of different bits all put together. We've got uh, contributions from children, uh, the readings particularly. We've got some lovely prayers coming up as well. Uh, a short thought. Uh, our blessing is going to come from Bishop Andrew. There's going to be input from the diocesan education team as well. Uh, songs, music, all sorts of things. It's all going to be uh, over the next few minutes. I do hope you enjoy this service. If you enjoy the service, share it with others. Uh, send them the link or, or recommend it to them. And hopefully we'll get as many people enjoying this service as possible. Every blessing.
there's a lovely prayer that uh, the Church of England have produced for Education Sunday, and it goes like this. God of all, through all time and in all places, in each circumstance and season, you call us together in this place and welcome us with open arms as your beloved children. Each one of us is precious to you and called by you. In this time of great change and uncertainty, you are unchanging and ever faithful. Through this time together, let us feel you speaking to us, leading us, teaching us, filling us with your spirit and strengthening us for the journey ahead. Amen. One of the great privileges of ministry and serving in parishes uh, is just the joy of being able to get involved with school communities and uh, getting to make friends and relate to people. I'm known in most of the schools I go to as our friend Philip and uh, that's deliberate because uh, the very first school I uh, ministered to was a school called St Dunstan's in Khan and they had an amazing head teacher and uh, she turned around to me when I first began uh, in that place and she said what are we going to call you Philip uh, and uh, she said do you want Father Philip, uh, Reverend Philip, what, Reverend Bromley, what do you, what do you want to be called uh, and I said I've no idea she said I know what we'll call you, we'll call you our friend Philip and uh, that was 20 years ago <laughs> and it stuck ever since and every school I've ever been in I've always been our friend Philip. There was one uh, boy who who came up to me in a, a, a school assembly and he said uh, I didn't know your first name was Alfred. Uh, isn't, it's not Alfred it's, it's our friend Philip. It's not Alfred Philip, no it's our friend Philip. Uh, schools and uh, children always produce lots of uh, hilarious stories. I was once walking into a playground and a mum came to me and she said, I must tell you what's just happened. When you came into the playground, my little Emily, she tugged on my trousers and she said, God has just walked into the playground. Yeah, I got promoted that day. Um, I've got lots of stories. I might show you one or two a bit later on. Let's enjoy uh, the next part of this service. Hi, um, I'd just like to say a big hello from all of us at St Michael's. We are looking forward to welcoming our children back for a new school year tomorrow. Um, probably the most um, uncertain new school year I've ever started back but I'd just like to say we really appreciate that we've been in your thoughts and your prayers um, and we would be really delighted if you would continue to think of us in the days and the weeks ahead. Um, we're delighted that we'll be seeing our children tomorrow but I think probably if we're really honest slightly daunted as well but thank you very much. Hello, this is a big welcome back from Netheraven All Saints Primary School. Hoping you're all safe and well, and let's pray for everybody as we move through this autumn term. Bye-bye. Hello, good afternoon from Bulford St Leonard's. Uh, it's Joe Trickett, the principal, sitting in our brand new reflection garden. Just wanted to say hello from our children and our staff. Um, just to say it's been a really exciting couple of days. It's been amazing to see the children come back. Um, everyone's really happy and we're just settling down and supporting each other. Just wanted to also say a big thank you to the Avon River team who supported the school um, and also to say um, that we're really thankful about Education Sunday as well um, and that we are really appreciating the fact that you are thinking about us and keeping us in your thoughts and prayers. Um, I hope everyone else is really well. God bless. Hello everyone from Durrington All Saints. I just want to welcome you all back to the new year and I pray that we will have a safe and happy and fruitful year at school and thank you for praying for us during the whole time of lockdown and when we were more restricted in our opening. Hello to you all at the Avon River team. Greetings from Durrington Junior School. 
we'd just like to say a big thank you for all the prayers that you've said for us all and we pray for you guys too. Stay safe. Romans chapter 14 verses 1 to 12. The weak and the strong. Accept the one whose fate is weak without quarrelling over disputable matters. The one person's faith allows them to eat anything but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with content the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant, to their own master? Servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another, another consider, considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat so, does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever ab abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or we die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister, or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. This is the word of the Lord. chapter 18 verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. 
As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his he, his wife and his children and all that had, be, had to be sold to repay the debt. As at this, his servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell, servant fell to his knees and begged him. Be patient with me and I'll pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other ser other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went to told their, tell their master everything that had happened. At, then the master called his servants, servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In his anger, um, in his, in anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from the heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Good morning. Lovely to be with you again. I always remember many years ago, someone said to me that education was the one gift that you can give your child that nobody can take away. Education gives us learning. It stretches the mind in ways we can't imagine and gives us a blank canvas on which we can paint and illustrate with words that help others to join us on a journey. It enables us to understand simple and complex ideas with far-reaching results that change us from knowing nothing to knowing something, stepping stones to want to know more. Jesus was a great teacher. He didn't have a pandemic to cope with, worrying about how many in a classroom or hall. But he did have to find a way to reach not just the crowd, but also the individual. I've been going into schools for many years now, and I've really enjoyed these times that enable to share Bible stories with children and adults. I've led an open the book team and taken collective worship in six schools, sharing the stories by way of narration and drama. Alongside the Bible stories and introduction, a time of reflection and a time of prayer, but that wasn't the end. Afterwards, the children used to go into their classrooms to write a journal, a joint one helped by the teacher for the younger years. But the older children had their own individual journals in which they wrote what they thought of the story, how it affected them and what they would like to say about it. This way, the stories weren't just a one-off, but really thought about. I remember one Friday when the collective worship was after lunch. One of the children came up to me and said how much she loved the stories. A good comment and perhaps one up from nice sermon vicar and I thought no more about it. On leaving the school at the end of the day, the parents were standing around collecting their children. One of the mums came up to me and told me how her daughter enjoyed the assemblies and that when she came home, she told her mum all about them. Great, I thought, the child must have really listened. Then the mum surprised me by saying that there were often things she herself didn't understand and asked if it was okay for her to share her questions with me. Well, talk about mission in action. God had prompted this mum to ask questions and to want to know more about Jesus and she wasn't afraid to ask. This wasn't the end. The next term I sent out a letter about a baptism christening course I would be running in the school during the lunchtime. 
The daughter was one of those who joined in. I didn't realise that God was still at work when a young boy, who didn't have a very happy home life, came into the room. To begin with, he wouldn't sit with the rest of us, but sat a distance away with his back to me, absolutely silent. Gradually, and I do mean gradually, his chair became closer and closer over the coming days until in the end he was joining in with the group. Jesus was the great teacher who didn't turn his back on anyone. How privileged we are to have our education, especially having Jesus in our lives. We too can be teachers to people of all ages and the good news is that we don't have to know everything, but just be open to share what we do. Amen. advisors for the Diocese of Salisbury Board of Education. Um, so in the Diocese of Salisbury there's 194 schools and academies um, so the, the schools around Durrington fit in with those as well. Um, there are 99 academies at the moment so we're waiting to see who will be the, the 100th um, and all of them are part of what we would say is our, our church school family and the church schools and academies support um, and look after 43,000 children. Um, so we really, um, we're right from the top of Royal Woods and Bassett down to Weymouth uh, and right, right across the diocese. And um, of all of our, of our schools, 51 of them are voluntary aided. So we support them particularly um, with, their, um, with their buildings and premises as well. And Joy Tubbs is our Director of Education. So I'm one of three school improvement advisors and we go out and visit schools um, to help with school leaders in terms of religious education, collective worship. Um, obviously, it's all rooted in the um, Church of England's vision for education, which was written around about 2016 um, and is called Deeply Christian, Serving the Common Good. 
So what we're encouraging is schools to reach out into their communities, um, to reach across to other schools um, and to look after children and families um, in the areas that they serve. It's, it's about the flourishing of the staff, the children and the families um, in schools. And the key areas that they're looking at is perhaps um, wisdom and then hope, which includes courageous advocacy, or many of us know that as social justice projects, uh, community, so living well together, knowing how to disagree well, how to understand one another, and then um, dignity and respect. So those are the key areas of the, of the work that we support schools with. Hi, I'm Andy Malcolm. I'm one of the CYP advisors at the diocese working out at the Board of Education. Um, a lot of our work is around an initiative known as Community Hubs, where we are uh, supporting parishes and schools in market towns to uh, work closely together for the uh, well-being and the benefit of our, our children and young people. Um, rooted heavily in consultation with the students in the schools, we uh, work together to find where the gaps in provision are for the, uh, for the students uh, and uh, um, maximise the resource of the local school. Uh, and the influence of the local church to make a meaningful difference to the lives of young people. It's heavily rooted around uh, the theory of growing faith, which was a national initiative uh, that launched uh, about 18 months ago, uh, where we are encouraging um, uh, the exploration of uh, communities that are connected, where school, home and church work closely together. Uh, to create opportunities for exploring faith with young people. Um, really exciting to see, uh, particularly fond of some work in Shaftesbury uh, over the last 12 months where we've been supporting the church and school to put on uh, summer activities uh, for young people in an area of the town where actually there wasn't a great deal of provision for them. And uh, one of the most memorable moments in these early months was uh, um, a young mother actually who had been um, watching our work over a number of weeks and who had been uh, living on her own and uh, who was the first time in six weeks that she had left her house was to come over and to say hello uh, and to see what we were doing and she, she made that decision because uh, she felt that uh, there was something different about the work we were doing uh, that we're, um, there was a sense of intrigue in her and that she felt safe to come and explore and talk to us as a community.
Let us pray this morning for all in education. As we pray this morning, we think of the African proverb saying that it takes a village to raise a child. And we think of all of the different people involved in education in our schools in the Avon River team area and the part we all play, including ourselves. Each of these rings represents not only the circle of the protective presence of God, but the practical guidance and support he gives to all the different people involved in educating the many hundreds of children across the Avon River team, many of whom are also part of our wider church community, being in our church schools. As we pray, we think about teachers, principals, teaching assistants, technicians, governors, trustees, CEOs, ministers, pupils, students, dinner ladies. Circle us, Lord, and circle all of those who work at a national and local level of government in education. Give them the values of justice, fair representation, concern for the weak, equal opportunities for every person. And may the sheer generosity of your presence infuse our national life with hope and encouragement. Circle us, Lord. Circle our nation with the values of the gospel. Keep hope within. Keep despair out. Circle us, Lord. And circle all those who teach and work with our children and our young people. And we ask particularly for those that teach and work in our schools in the Avon River team. Give them peace and security as they go about their daily work. Help them that, as they guard those who are vulnerable. Strengthen those who are struggling and encourage those who are on the brink of something new. We pray particularly for those who lead in our schools because we know that that can be a lonely place. So we ask you, Lord, to circle those leaders with your love, compassion and care. Circle us, Lord. Circle us with the love of the gospel. Keep love within. Keep danger out. Circle us, Lord. And circle all those who learn. We pray this morning for all children and young people as they learn. We pray that through whatever media they learn, that they become responsible members of humankind, able to relieve suffering and working for peace, that they may become amazing citizens in this world, recognising injustice, and that they may always know that they are loved by you. And through you, there is always a reason and purpose to life. We pray especially for those children this morning who are currently excluded from or unable to access education, that they may be touched by you. Circle us, Lord. Circle us with the light of the gospel. Keep light within. Keep darkness out. Circle us, Lord. And circle us, Lord, who are on our minds. We pray this morning for those who are on our minds right now. There are some who are simply not well, some who are fearful, some who are in pain, some who are on their last journey. Circle them now, Lord, the very people we name in our hearts, in the healing presence of Christ. Circle us and them, Lord, with the peace of the gospel. Keep peace within, keep fear out. Circle us, Lord, 
our hearts, our homes, our schools and our churches in the Avon River team, our nation and our world. Circle us and let us never slip outside the enchantment of your grace. For Jesus' sake. Amen. I do hope you've enjoyed uh, this service. We've got a closing prayer which I'm going to share with you. Let's pray. God did not leave his people alone in the wilderness, but he stayed with them and led them on. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We are a learning people in a time of change. May the God who calls us lead us on. Amen. One of the uh, assemblies I always do around about Ash Wednesday every year is to bring some stones into school and uh, each child gets their own stone to hold. And we ask the children to uh, press into their stone uh, something which uh, they need to say sorry for or perhaps uh, something which uh, somebody else has done to them, uh, hurt or something like that, which they can uh, put into the stone as well. And then we build a can and we let go of those uh, sorries and hurts and we create something out of it. Um, I, I remember doing this in one school and a parent coming up to me and saying, I hope you don't mind, but we've taken one of the stones away from the can uh, my little boy uh, really finds it terribly useful to take the stone and put it on his bedside table. Uh, every time he has nightmares or, or, or gets upset or angry, he takes the stone and he presses all of his hurts and his worries into the stone. And, uh, and the parents said to me, I hope you don't mind, we've taken the stone, we've, we've kept it. And I said, that's absolutely fine. And uh, it was amazing how God was using that stone to help that little boy get through a difficult time in his life. Let's have a blessing. Hello, friends. Good to be with you in worship today. And at the end of your service, to just take a moment to receive from God his blessing and the presence of his Holy Spirit. It's interesting that when we think about education and learning and Christ our rabbi and teacher, one of the words that comes to mind is inspire of course and great teachers inspire their students. And to be inspired literally means, as you probably know, to be breathed upon or breathed into and uh, to be full of the Holy Spirit, to be inspirited, that's what it means and, and, and in the beginning of course that's how we receive life in the first place in, in the garden. Uh, the, the Lord breathed life into the clay and, and we, were, we were formed and so to inspire is one of the greatest and most godly things that we can do and also that we can receive and of course we can't pass on inspiration if we're not inspired ourselves if we're not full of the holy spirit so let's pause for god's blessing and, and receive his inspiration the peace of god which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of god and of his son jesus christ our lord and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and inspire you now and always. Amen.
his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Children and their children, and their children, may you spare. 